Hey everyone, welcome back to Nintendo Prime. If you enjoy speculation, opinions, news, all that stuff surrounding Nintendo and, you know, occasionally the rest of the video game industry, I would appreciate it if you would drop a like and subscribe to the channel. We do have a new giveaway for 80,000, something about giving away like a Master Sword, like a replica Master Sword with a steel blade and some replica Hylian shields and Deku shields. Again, you know, that's not even a giveaway happening right now that's at 80K, but you know what? We're not here to talk about that because I discovered something today that Silly me, I should have discovered last year. Uh, after all, I was one of the first people in the world to get my hands on with the Switch OLED. You guys might remember my unboxing video, me breaking the screen, and a whole bunch of crazy stuff I did with the Switch OLED before it actually released to the public. Uh, one thing I did was actually examine these docks. Uh, in fact, this dock is still, still technically apart uh, from when I did that because I haven't really used this dock much since because I have another one. I have a Splatoon uh, one. Well, basically, it's the same dock. Uh, I have a version one and a version two. So I got like the dock that came with version one switch and version two switch. Uh, and, you know, the other one's got a Splatoon skin on it for my kids. Anyways, point is that these are the cur the two current docks on the market. There is a uh, black variant of this one, but I'm holding up the white one just to so you guys can easily see that these are two different docks. Now, the thing is, I noted way back when that there was some differences between these docks. Now, we already know this dock can be updated and this dock can't. Uh, although Nintendo's never actually released an update for this dock, there is memory on here and an update dock option on Switch that only is available for this, this dock. So, okay, fine. That doesn't really mean a whole lot. What we also discovered is that the HDMI port and controller on here is different than the HDMI port and controller on this one. Uh, we discovered that this one is actually capable of HDMI 2.1, whereas this one's only capable of 2.0. Now, Honestly, you can still run 4K and whatever through either one of those ports. The difference is going to be at how many frame rates you can run it at. But the point is, is that this did have a more modern HDMI port with a, a, the proper chip associated with it in order to support 4K 60 FPS. Now, again, this doesn't really matter because it could just be those parts were cheaper than getting these old ones because this is these are basically become standard at this point, buying buying these ports and those chips in bulk is probably cheaper than going back to an older standard. So it could just be a cost saving measure and easily pass offable. And obviously anything surrounding the ability to update the dock is merely theoretical because Nintendo's never actually updated the dock for any purpose. So what then what new thing has been discovered about the Switch OLED dock that's bringing us back to talking about it? Because the whole reason to examine the differences between the docks outside of morbid curiosity is because everyone wants to know if there's any hints towards a, another platform, a more powerful platform. And for the most part, we've been able to come up with a lot of nada or speculation at best, like the new HDMI port, the update dock. That's still speculative because we don't really know why those things exist and then we don't know what the tangible benefits are and one of them could have just been due to cost saving measures. So. We don't really have any direct proof publicly that there is a new more powerful switch. We have a bunch of rumors. We have a bunch of people claiming that dev units are out there. A bunch of people think it's going to be based on the Drake and a whole bunch of different things. But we don't have any definitive proof. I mean, the closest we had was an NVIDIA leak earlier this year with MVN2. And even then, MVN2 is used, not, you know, MVN, which is used with Nintendo Switch, was also used with other devices. So there's no guarantee that MVN2 was the Switch Pro or Switch 2. So there's no guarantee. I still think it's highly likely, but again, speculative. There's no direct proof until now. So one thing I never thought to check on the uh, on these docks was the bottom of the docks. And you can go ahead and check yours as well and verify this for yourself. I'll throw up a couple up close images for you guys. Uh, and these images um, come from uh, family boards just so I can provide like a second source on this. You don't have to just believe me. And we found out there's a difference between these two docks. And I thought this difference was easily explainable, but not exactly. So this dock can output 18 watts or 1.5 amps. Okay. So it can output 18 watts of power. Uh, when you th hear watts, you probably think of that most commonly with like charging phones. Oh, you got 45 watts of charge of power, 50 watts or 65, etc. Uh, but yeah, this one can output 18 watts. It's actually faster to charge it directly off the cord than it is in the dock. The dock is actually doesn't charge it as quickly, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, 18 watts of output on this at 1.4 amps. This dock has 2.4 amps of output 
and can output 45 watts. Now, again, I just mentioned quick charging, and honestly, that is exactly what I assumed when I noticed this. So I didn't think much of it. I actually noticed it a few months ago. Someone mentioned to me today, though, uh, that, you know, that 45 watt thing doesn't quick charge. And I, I was confused. I'm like, what do you mean it doesn't quick charge? This outputs, you know, what, 15 amps and this outputs 45. That should mean that any switch you put in, whether it's the OLED or the uh, version one or version two, should charge the same. So got Eric's version one switch. I have my switch OLED and then I have my fiance's version two switch and I did charge testing. Now, again, this is not going to be a 100% verifiable test across all mediums. There's battery degradation, age of systems, but it shouldn't really matter when you're comparing the same system to the same system. I don't care how quickly the switch OLED charges in comparison to say how quickly my the version one Eric switch charges because those two data points are irrelevant. What actually matters is how quickly does each individual device charge to itself between the two different docks. And what we found out is that no matter if it was Eric's version one switch, my fiance's version two, or my switch OLED, that it didn't matter which one of these docks we used, which one of the three docks really, I mean, it's 15 watts on the version one and version two dock anyways, but it didn't matter which one of these docks we used, it took the same amount of time to charge them. Now, I tried double checking with a voltage meter, which is a little difficult without taking this entirely apart. Uh, and I'm not exactly, you know, an electronics expert when it comes to um, electrical traces and, and all of that. But what I will say is, at least from my capability to test how quickly switches charge from zero to 100, uh, it took exactly the same time on both of these platforms. And I checked at various different time periods, you know, just hitting hit the power button and seeing what percent it was at. And they were at the exact same percents at the exact same time intervals or within like a 0.1% difference. So like a margin of error difference. So uh, needless to say, this dock isn't charging any of the three switches faster than this dock is. What does that mean? Well, this dock isn't actually taking advantage of the 45 watts of output it has currently or 45 watts of max output capable it's not actually outputting that and or the current switch isn't you know able to take it in like it's possible that 45 watts is coming out of this but the switch itself can't accept that 45 watts just like it's possible uh that the switch oled you know can't accept it either but you know it's limiting it down to a smaller wattage input so i kept thinking Regardless of if this is actually outputting 45 or 15, or if the switch can take in 45 or 15, why would this have the ability to output 45 watts when the switch can't take advantage of that output? And the only thing that comes to mind is that this dock wasn't originally built for the switch OLED. This dock was likely originally built for something that could actually use that power. Now, what is that something? I don't know. Again, we've heard speculation for a long time that, hey, maybe the Switch Pro was supposed to release last year, but they couldn't get enough chips made, so they just went with the base Switch hardware and threw it in what was supposed to be the Switch Pro, and then obviously they were already making these docks, so they just threw these docks out there. Yeah, they're 45-watt capable docks, but, you know, what's the big deal? I think, personally, because they use the same charge bricks, by the way, so there's no difference between the bricks, uh, that... Clearly, this dock was meant for something that uh, us end consumers cannot currently enjoy. I don't know, fundamentally, if we are ever going to get a Switch Pro. I don't know. They could skip it. They could never have been making it. Uh, this could just be a happy accident. Maybe it's 45 watts of output because it's cheaper. Although, I think we can know this based on other devices that give you the cheap chargers that only output like 10 watts that... Clearly, uh, 45 watts of output's more expensive. So this dock is more expensive than this one just based on that, let alone the Ethernet jack. But guys, I am I'm a bit perplexed at the moment. I obviously am a tech enthusiast and I love new technology. I'm excited for the upcoming 4000 series of GPUs and whatever the 7000 series looks like from AMD. I'm excited for that. I'm excited. Uh, I think it's really interesting what Intel is doing with the efficiency cores on the on the 1200 series of, of, of CPUs. I'm curious how AMD is going to respond with their next stuff. I like enterprise level as well when we're going into the Threadripper or we're going in, into um, the Xeon stuff. I, I really like all this stuff. I love technology. I love 
Following the advancement of phones, I know all about the, the, Xiaomi, the Xiaomi thing out there, the 12S Ultra Pro, whatever the hell they're calling it. There's so many different names on it. Uh, with the one-inch sensor on the camera, I think that's incredible. The cinematic mode on iPhone, I've been using it on some of my uh, videos, and it looks really, really good, uh, even though it clearly is one of those situations where that particular lens and that particular thing widens my body. It makes me look a little uh, wider than I than I prefer, but the rest of it, the cinematography of it looks great. So. I uh, just continue to deal with looking even fatter than I really am. But my thing is, when looking into the lens of technology and wondering what the hell is Nintendo doing next, it's hard to ignore that there are some fact-based signs out there of what Nintendo is doing next. You want more signs than just this random fact about the dock? Okay, fine. How about the fact that a recent patent just went just went public that Nintendo is working on a new upscaling technology. Now, this doesn't mean that it needs to be for a new platform, but we already know Nintendo is using currently available upscaling technology that is open source from AMD, known as FSR. Why would they need to patent any sort of upscaling technology when they're already using available upscaling technology? And you might go, well, Nate, then what about DLSS? What if this is a modified version of DLSS? By the way, I went through the patent. It doesn't really explain much it is hardware based so there is that that does make you lean towards dlss but you know they're working with nvidia and i'm sure whatever nintendo does for their platform they're going to want a fully customized version of it that is specific to the hardware that's going to be in that platform right like that, that just makes the most sense you know using a, a broader dlss that's meant for a wide range of hardware uh won't be as effective as obviously something specifically targeted for one piece of hardware, but that's not the hero there. I think that's why that they would do a patent like that. But Nintendo is clearly working on that. Uh, they have mentioned in the past they're always working on new hardware. This year, Nintendo at their uh, end of fiscal year investors meeting back in April uh, did say or didn't say anything. They were asked about whether a new Switch would come out this year or an upgraded Switch, and Furukawa's response was no comment. And this is the first time he's no commented that question in four years. So it makes you wonder. What's going on at Nintendo? I don't know. I have no sources. I'm just sharing information and speculating from it. But, you know, if I had to guess, and we'll, maybe we'll never know because they never release it, this dock was not intended for the Switch OLED we have today, but rather one that had a different chipset inside that could have taken advantage of the 45 watts, not only for charging, but for increased clock speeds uh, to output to your TV, a chip that's a little bit more power hungry. No, that's what this doc seems to suggest. So you guys let me know what you think about this. Obviously, it's wild speculation. I know a lot of you guys out there are tired of talking about there being a new switch and you're just going to there's going to be clickbait comments down in the uh, down there. There's going to be people saying that I'm just milking the hell out of this. Look, I this wasn't my plan video today. I actually had something else I was working on, but then I started digging into this and, and, and doing testing. And uh, over a few days, I started realizing, you know what? Uh, this is actually worth talking about. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video and I will catch you in the next one.